I thought this would be a great video to do to really help the people who are inspired to preserve their own turtle shells for the so many countless reasons there are. It's also necessary because there's people out there purposely giving you insufficient information just because it's simple to do. Here's what you really need to know. I could have done the same thing that other people who are disingenuous for clicks are doing. Be like, hey, if you have a turtle shell, clean it with ants. Here's how. Oh my god, look at them all working. Oh hey, look, they cleaned my entire shell. And th that's the reason why these people aren't showing you the before and after and the true process. At the end of the day, they're just pissing off a bunch of ants and cutting film. If you've ever heard that fire ants can kill an adult turtle, it's true. But do they consume the whole thing? They'll consume the flesh. But most often, most of the time when people find a turtle shell, it's not fresh. Most of the turtle has decayed. There might be a hard, dried skin still attached to the interior. Even parts of the turtle might be just still dried and hardened in there. It'll be stiff, solid, and dry. And that's why it's so awesome when you do find a shell that's already been picked clean by the mammals, birds, and insects. I've never seen ants feeding or fire ants feeding on the hardened dry parts of what's left of a decaying turtle. That's why the people out there saying to do that in their video, if they have one, never show you a before and after. Think about it. They're not showing you, hey, this is what it looks like when I left it on the hill. And this is what it looks like three weeks later when I came back. It's not cool to mislead your audience for clicks. Be authentic and really try to help. Well, that's what I'm here to do. So when you do find a turtle shell, here are your more realistic options. Uh, first better option is exactly what some of my subscribers were already talking about in the comments section of one of my videos, giving advice to others because ants weren't working. It's to use and collect potato bugs, also called pill bugs or roly polies. You can throw your shell in a small bucket or something with some dirt and leaves and just get a bunch of these bugs. They're so easy to find too, they're everywhere. Here I'm just searching around these extra concrete blocks that were outside and here's a bunch right here. You can even just move around some leaf litter and eventually find a few there. Yeah, they kind of like shaded, damp areas in the dirt and leaves. So wherever you find them, just pick them up and put them in your bucket and let the work begin. Yeah, so when you find a turtle shell and... It hasn't been perfectly picked clean by nature yet and the sun hasn't done all its work and there's still bits of remains in it. It's going to be dried stiff and solid and nothing the ants can help you with. So here's some tools that you can use to help cut and scrape and pull out whatever's left in there. You can use a knife or a blade to get up in there and cut stuff loose. If there's a hardened skin layers or carcass around the edge, uh, front and back, a nice sharp box cutter can help slice through the tougher parts. Just be careful not to nick or gouge the shell. Wire cutters are another great tool to use to cut off any stubborn dry pieces. And definitely also needle nose pliers can help grabbing onto pieces and you can twist and pull them off however you need to. Just get them right off the shell. There's a lot of good tools just like these that you'll be able to use to help remove dried pieces of turtle within your shell. As for pressure washing turtle shells, that's only for freshly harvested shells. You know, for people who eat turtles, they'll cut the shell in half, cut out all the meat down to the bone and shell, and then from there you can simply pressure wash the rest of the skin and tissue off the fresh shell. 
but if you find a shell out in the woods to preserve and come home and pressure wash it, you'll just be breaking fragile bones and sending the scoots flying. So uh, the pressure washing is only for a freshly harvested turtle. And finally, here's the last option I'll leave you with that I'm currently utilizing, and it's to get a small cage that you can leave it in to still be exposed to the elements, but a wild animal or animal can't get it and run off with it. By getting a cheap and affordable yet durable rabbit cage, you can keep your shells and bones safe while still being exposed to the elements, the same elements you need to help clean it for you. If you already have some type of cage, that's great, but you can pick one up brand new for like 25 bucks and make sure to get it without a bottom. Since the ants aren't going to help you, we need the sun and beetles and insects to be able to get at this thing still. You even have the option to now half bury the cage and shell if you wanted to. But by not having a bottom to the cage, all the insects you need can still get to it. Hopefully you can find a good spot for it where you can leave it alone and not worry about it for another month or two, depending on the range and rate of decay. In my rabbit cage right now, you can see I have a bunch of future projects for you all in the works. I got skulls, bones, a massive catfish head. Here's a skull to a long-nosed gar. Yeah, not an alligator gar going to be getting this to museum quality in the next few months, so stay tuned for that one. So, you all came to the right place. I'll never steer you wrong. And thank you so much for watching and enjoying, and good luck with your turtle shell projects. I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.